What is going on, Charles Botenston? Today we're gonna to be talking about why condos are so much more expensive than co-ops. So we have five different points down here that we're gonna go over. Obviously, if you don't know the difference between a condo and a co-op, highly recommend you go check out those videos first. Second of all, when it comes down to ownership, the actual legal structure, getting into a co-op, and everything that you need, we're gonna sort of talk about it, but I definitely recommend you check that out first. So before we get into that, if we look at a comparable one bedroom condo and a comparable one bedroom co-op say the view is the same the amenities were the same the building was the same the layout was the same everything was identical the condo is going to be about 20 percent more and here is one of the reasons so obviously if it's about a million dollars 20 percent more is 1.2 million dollars that's a significant difference between a co-op and a condo in pricing one of them is one of the differences is because the co-op supply is a lot higher so co-ops consists about 74 percent of the market condos only 26 percent of the market so that number has definitely shifted in the condos favor because everything built nowadays is all condos if it's not a rental building so let's just go over the history really quick so the reason that everything is co-op is because if we go over the history of new york city is that everything first was a rental building so there really was no inner there were there was no internet there was definitely no internet but there was no ownership of real estate in new york city way back in the day only until about the late 1800s to early 90s hundreds that people say actually I kind of want to buy the place I live in or I really like this townhouse so really a lot of the townhouses were set up for single-family homes and and then they subdivided it so in other words if you're wealthy obviously you had a single-family home a townhouse and then if you were a regular citizen or lower you know income citizen then you obviously had subdivided townhouses say the Lower East Side or the Upper West Side which was very wealthy back in the day or you had massive buildings and they were all rental buildings so this is what happened is that the people that lived there the building wanted to get taxed wanted to tax the people so what they said was buy this place at a dollar say in the East Village or Lower East Side or West Village when it was very high crime there was a lot of drugs there's a lot of prostitution and essentially what happened was the city said we need to clean this up so you buy it for a dollar you just have to pay the monthly city taxes so you bought the home for a dollar and what happened was the city said okay here's the building that you no one owns the building because nobody owned the building you all five of the people that live there own the building okay you each get a share within a corporation and all five of you based on the size of the apartment where it looks over you're subdividing the shares based on all of that information the size and everything else so a bigger apartment got more shares in the corporation and then over time you paid down the mortgage on the building and then there was no mortgage but it was still a co-op the reason that there's more co-ops is because that was the structure in which people who lived in rental buildings were able to actually afford where they live because they said condos you have to pay say forty thousand dollars nobody had forty thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars but what they said was a dollar to buy it pay the city taxes over time you can finally pay off the mortgage on the building and then you have no mortgage 98 percent of the buildings in new york city that are co-ops probably 97 percent have a mortgage on the building that they're still paying down it's not a bad thing and actually you could use that in your favor in the fact that when you pay when you have a mortgage you can borrow against it for repairs so in other words you could borrow it against for roof repairs facade repairs boiler repairs whatever so number one is there is a higher supply 74 percent are co-ops here in new york city as well as most condos really didn't come online in other words get built until the 1980s when people preferred condos and the reason being is that it was actually true property ownership where you had a physical deed and a physical you you owned it instead of the space was a corporation yes you did have condos in the late 1800s they're known as pre-world war one condos which are very expensive on the upper west side downtown throughout the city number two is the condo supply is very popular outside of new york city so in other words and i'm not talking about say the rest of the country but i mean the rest of the country who don't live in new york city or the globe who wanna park money in New York City, they buy that place and they use it as a second home, or they buy that place and they just park cash in the United States, or that LLC buys that apartment. So you have demand globally 
for condos in New York City. It's not just local people. You're talking about not only nationally, but internationally. There's a ton of buildings that have just vacant apartments because it's a second home. And I put it in quotes because they barely live there. But what they want to do is park their cash in the United States or park their cash. This happened in Miami. Park their cash in a condo, let ride it out, you know, just say that they own a place in New York City. So you have a lot higher demand globally for condos. Number three is the subletting policy. A lot of people say, this is what I recommend is that if you don't live in the home for more than five years, don't buy. Because when you buy on the front end, in other words, all the closing costs on the front end, and when you sell on the back end, it just doesn't make sense. Yes, you can write, you know, obviously talk to your accountant, you can write down uh, interest on your mortgage, you could write down some of the taxes and all that other jazz. But the third reason is because subletting after those five years, so this is what a lot of people do they buy a one bedroom and they grow a family they need more space they make more money and then after the fifth year they say actually I want another place so what they do is they then buy a two bedroom but they take money out of the one bedroom to then buy a two bedroom they rent out the one bedroom but the problem is in a lot of co-ops is that there's a maximum amount of rental or it ha or they put someone in there that they know, but the thing is they can only have them there for two years because there is a sublet policy that the co-ops have that condos don't have. So essentially you're subletting a place forever immediately in condos. In co-ops, there's a policy that says you have to live there for three years and then rent it out for two maximum. And by the way, we're also gonna tax those two years. All right, we're gonna tax it 10% of the rent or 10% of your mortgage or 10% of your net profit after the rental. So a lot of people, they understand that the subletting policy is non-existent in condos, so that's why they love it. Number four, generally condos are newer. Like I said before, is that condos really started to get popular and come online in the 1980s. Yeah, I would say really not the 1970s. Co-ops, you know, if you go to the Upper East Side and you see white brick on the outside, that was a popular brick on the in the 1960s and the 1950s. That was like the cool thing. So a lot of the buildings were built in the 1950s and 60s, except those were all co-ops. 1970s, that's when it started saying, actually, we don't like this whole legal corporation idea. I want to physically own the property. And then in the 1980s, it, condos started becoming popular. Popular. And then now there's really no co-ops that are actually, there, there's none. I only know of one building that was converted from a rental to a co-op. And the reason being is they couldn't buy the building. So again, they took out a mortgage. All of them paid down the mortgage. Each shareholder paid down the mortgage. So you're looking at newer buildings in condos. And number five, which obviously uh, I was talking about in the beginning, is that the purchase restrictions are a lot less in condos. So in condos, you only need 10% down. Obviously, the bank is gonna require 20%. But in co-ops, you need a certain amount in your, in your bank account after you purchase. You need a certain amount of money that you're making so you can actually afford the property. You also need a certain credit score. In a condo, they just say you could buy it cash, your parents can buy it for you, there can be a gift, you could uh, you know, co-purchase, you can have it guaranteed. It doesn't really matter. Condos don't really care. That could be good and bad. But if you don't have the money and it's gonna be gifted from your parents or from an estate sale, or you wanna buy it with someone that you know, say as a friend, or a family member, you could do that. In co-ops, they don't really like that. Some of them do allow co-purchasing and gifting and guarantors and parents buying for kids, but it's very specific and it's co-op specific. Even though two co-ops are right next to each other, one has loose rules, the other one has really tough rules. So obviously the purchase restrictions pretty much restrict anyone outside of the United States. You can't buy a co-op that's an, in an LLC. A lot of condos, you can't, you can't do anything about it. You can't, so this is what the condo the only thing that condo offers is a first right of refusal, and they have to give that waiver after, within 30 days of giving in your purchase application so long as your purchase application is good. So in other words, the condo says, we will not buy this apartment, we'll allow the purchase to go through. In a co-op, co they review the purchase application, they then say, okay, let's meet with the buyers or the purchaser, and then we'll make a decision. We'll, we'll say yes or no. And right now, co-ops are insane. They're denying people because of small little things, or they're taking so much time and more documents or more information, get this notarized, get this thing. And it's just, it's insane. It's insane. That's why a lot of people, they prefer condos. And going back to point number two is there's a higher demand for condos.
That's why it's more expensive. The supply is a lot lower in condos. So the price is gonna continue going up, but with all this property that's coming on that are condos, they are in the luxury area, you're really getting a lot more condos, but they're still extremely expensive because they are brand new, beautiful, high, high, very expensive, 5,000 a square foot, 10,000 a square foot condos that are just south of the park. So if you guys wanna know a little bit more about condo versus co-op, highly recommend you check that video. Uh, that's also on our channel. And then obviously this is why co-ops are less expensive or the other way around, which is why condos are more expensive. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Charles at Botenston.com is my email address. And I'll just leave you with this is that we come out with a property. Actually, it's more of a market report that's based on the three boroughs that we really cover, which is Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. And essentially in those market reports, we really dialed down three areas pricing, inventory, rentals, and obviously within that, you have a good idea where it's going. So we obviously know what lagging, which is where is the pricing, how much inventory is on, but demand is very important. How many buyers are in the marketplace? What's the absorption rate? And we go over that. We're going to be putting out the next one. Again, leave your comments below. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.